a member of the globalization seek of the open oil community. In this episode, we will talk about some of the basics of the Linux PCI subsystem, an essential part of the Linux kernel. Before we dive into the PCI subsystem, we must first understand what PCI is. PCI is an acronym for Peripheral Component Interconnect. It is a local computer bus for attaching hardware devices in a computer. PCI was first developed by Intel, but subsequent development was taken over by the PCI SIG. PCI is part of the PCI local bus standard, a revolution in the development of computer architecture. With PCI local bus, high-speed devices such as GPU and drivers can be connected directly to the CPU bus, allowing devices to fully utilize their bandwidth. This diagram illustrates the mechanism of a PCI-based system, which consists of the following main components. The host bridge that manages the PCI segment and connects CPU to the PCI bus. One or more PCI local buses that connect to various devices. PCI devices, including agent devices and bridge devices. In the diagram, the PCI to PCI bridge is a bridge device that extends the PCI bus, allowing for large-scale interconnections among PCI-based systems. Let's see what real PCI devices look like. A PCI network interface card. PCI slots. You may have noticed that one of the slots looks different than others. Right, that's a PCIe slot. Here is a photo of a PCIe device, which is actually an SSD. PCIe is an improved version of PCI. The final E represents Express. It offers many advantages over PCI, such as a higher system bus throughput, a better performance scaling for bus devices, more detailed error detection and reporting methods, a lower I.O. pin count, and a smaller physical footprint, and native hot swap functionality. A PCIe link, also called an interconnect, may have 1, 4, 8, or 16 lanes with a slot width of x1, x2, x4, x8, or x16. The link count is automatically negotiated during device initialization and can be restricted by either endpoint. A PCIe X1 card can be inserted to a multi-lane slot, for example, an X8 or X16 slot. The initialization cycle automatically negotiates the highest mutually supported link count. In a PCIe system, a device called a PCIe switch can expand the number of PCIe lanes supported by the host device. Such flexibility allows the host device to handle more devices and process data more dynamically. Well, that's some of the basics on PCIe. Let's shift our focus back to the main subject of this video, the Linux PCI subsystem. Linux wouldn't be able to recognize and operate physical PCI devices without the PCI subsystem. In the Linux PCI subsystem, as shown in the diagram, each PCI component or device is described by a data structure. These data structures can be used to create a data structure diagram similar to the PCI subsystem hardware typology. So, how do the data structures drive the Linux PCI subsystem? Let's take a quick look at the Linux PCI driver framework. The Linux kernel abstracts the bus, devices, and drivers. Devices and drivers are connected to the bus. The bus type structure maintains two linked lists, K-list devices and K-list drivers to store the pointers of all the devices and drivers connected to the bus. When a new device or driver is registered, the system will attempt to match the device or driver using the match function. If the match is successful, the system will proceed to the probe function. According to the framework, 
The first step is to create a PCI bus in the kernel so that the PCI devices and drivers can be connected. This is done by the PCI driver initialization function. During the initialization of the Linux PCI subsystem, the function creates a PCI bus data structure. That is the PCI bus type global variable. As we can see from the function interfaces of the structure, the match function matches the device with the driver. If the match is successful, the device probe function is called. Now, let's have a look at the match function. When a new device is registered, the function is called for each driver connected to the bus. It checks the data structure of the new device for matching vendor and device IDs. Sometimes, a driver uses PCI any ID to support all devices. After a device and a driver get matched, the device probe function is called to initialize the device. This diagram illustrates the probe function process. First, the function finds the device and driver to be matched. Then, it reads the configuration information of the PCI bus and assigns an interrupt request number or IRQ number to the device. Finally, it calls the probe function written in the matched driver to initialize the device. In the previous step, the PCI driver initialization function created a PCI bus in the kernel. After this, the PCI subsystem enumerates and creates the devices. Where creating a device means maintaining a data structure describing the device. In this diagram, we can see how the PCI subsystem uses the PCI host probe function to scan and enumerate the devices. The device scanning process starts from PCI scan root bus bridge. PCI register host bridge registers the host bridge device with the system. During the registration, root bus, also called bus zero, is created. Some resource allocation and initialization are also performed. Then, PCI scan child bus calls PCI scan child bus extend to scan devices connected to bus zero. This function scans both PCI agent devices and PCI bridge devices. The scanned agent devices are registered with the system. If a subordinate bus is found, the function creates a child data structure and calls itself recursively to scan the subordinate bus. From the perspective of the algorithm, the scanning process is a typical depth-first search or DFS, as shown in the diagram. Starting at zero, the system explores as far as possible along each branch to scan each agent device and the subordinate structure of each bridge device, and then backtracks to the previous bus. After the enumeration, the system maintains the information about each PCI device, with buses and devices created in the system the PCI devices can finally be operated by Linux. That's all for today's course on the Linux PCI subsystem basics. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in Linux kernel or Open Euler, please visit our SIG page and stay tuned for more mini courses. See you next time.